Hello, I'm Noah. I'm Jack. And together we created N J Pong. Um, uh, bec and become a pro with N J Pong. That's our slogan. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm going to talk about how we created our project and how we got our idea. One day in the winter, uh, Jack, Jack and me, or Jack and I, were going down to the Haven, and we were going to going to play ping pong, but I was running a little late. And it was too much time to go and set up the ping pong or the like, bring up the uh, other side of the ping pong table. And so Jack's like, we then thought of this idea that was more fun and added more to the experience than just the regular backboard. So also here are some pictures you might not be able to see because of our project, but just throughout our final or prototype of our project. Does um, who's seen the movie Forrest Gump? Does yeah. um, know how he becomes a pro ping pong player? Um, do you want to be like this? Do you guys? Raise your hand if you want, if you want to. Yeah. Well, Use NJ Pong. Yeah, that can get you there. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the materials. This is what we used on our final prototype, everything. Uh, we used a 5 by 4 piece of plywood for our base and our backboard. Uh, we then used four funnels to connect our tubes to the holes. After that, we then used our iPhone expert table tennis robot to shoot out the balls after they went to the We also used the German hook. We, we, we also just cut it into halves, set it up like that. Uh, after that, we used lumber as supports for our product. Works pretty well. And then uh, we use some netting. So, so I think this was what really helped us a lot with netting because it seems like while people were using our project, there was a lot of people who were hitting the balls out and this was keeping them in and we didn't have to go run all over the place to get them. So some of the tools we used was a saw stop table saw. That, that, we used that for uh, the big base. Then we used the delta band saw to start to cut the uh, funnels. Then we use the chop saw to cut the supports. And we use the hot glue gun to hot glue the pipes to the robot and to the funnels. Then we use the sand belt to make the holes on the funnels better. Then we use the Bosch hand drill to cut the big holes for the ball to go through. And we use it to drill all the screws in it. Okay, so we had a few problems. Uh, one of our problems was finding the right location for the uh, holes to be on the backboard. Uh, we tried to line them up in a straight line, and that didn't really work because we were just hitting the same exact shots every time, and it wasn't being it wasn't much of a challenge. So what we did was we tried to make uh, two different types of holes: one for just regular shots, and one for uh, blob shots, and I think that really worked. Then our second problem was connecting the system for the balls to travel to. We first were going to do um, PVC pipes, but if the ball is into that hard enough, the ball will bounce back out. Then we, then we, I was thinking of a net to like the trip, and the net would direct the ball into here, but it would took a lot more time. And now, then one of our classmates was playing with the pipe, um, the tubing, and it turned out to work very well because it can stretch out to a longer length, to the length that we needed it. Uh, marketing. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the price. We are going to do a 200% markup from our 73.99, and then add on uh, uh, price, uh, some labor costs to uh, get them at uh, 140, 147, nine, or 140, wait, 146 or 147.98 uh, plus a uh, $11 labor cost to just for building these and making them. Uh, also, uh, NJ Pong was created for all uh, all levels of ping pong players. Doesn't matter if you're a great player or just just starting out. Also, uh, like I said, we sold 169 dollars. But other than only selling to like sports stores for people who play ping pong, we want to turn it into kind of like a game or even something uh, to use at like schools and community centers, hospitals, even for when people kids uh, children hospitals when they are getting out of life getting better than uh, other places like Dave and Buster's, where it's like, 
like if you played foosball and like know how the if you score the ball stays in there, we could do that with the ping pong balls. Then a summary of our project is the next generation of ping pong backboards, and it will help, it'll be it's a lot funner because you can practice returning serves and making serves. Then it has four holes to hit through to practice all your hits. Then you have um, then we have a powerful ping pong shooter, ping pong ball shooter, and a yeah, and it's affordable for people who <coughs> want to play with other friends. Okay, uh, for the last thing, I just want to show you how it will work. So if you have your ball, uh, what will happen is you'll try and get it. You might not get it in the first few times, but it'll get up with it. I'm going to go into the thing. That would be on all the time. That might not be set up in my day. And it'll shoot through, and that'll keep the process of going in and out and in and out. So then you never have to go back here and clean up. And you only need one ball because it'll always circulate through. And never. That's pretty much our idea. Thank you. Well, it's obviously presented well. My two compatriots here don't have questions right off the bat. So that's good. You covered all the bases. I thought you did a very nice job in understanding your market. Again, I hate to be the one who always talks about costs, but you didn't have anything in there for labor, which is another problem other people have had. And when you talk about a markup, if you go from $100 to $200, that's not a 200% markup, that's a 100% markup. So uh, you have a good markup in there, and I think it'll cover some of your labor costs, but you need to make sure you include what is the cost to you know, ship it and get it to the product and then get it to the market. That's a very, very important part of all this. Um, my one question that I had would center around uh, uh, the marketplace you had, uh, what, where do you think your biggest, again, I saw the folks yesterday using a lot, where do you think the biggest uh, demand would come for your product? Uh, for colleges, uh, colleges, colleges, or in your, do or like in your dorm, or if you want to play a game with each other. Um, another place might be like even in Kernbowls or somewhere, like, you know, they have the basketball hoops there, mm -hmm. something like that, because it's like, it's addictive. It's like, oh yeah, I want to get into that hole. And if you're like there and you see, oh, it, like ten shots for a dollar, you can someone can make a ton of money from this. Let me point out too that it, it, you should not give up on the individual homes yeah. because this takes up a lot less room than a traditional ping pong table would. You know, so you can set it up in the corner of a room versus you know a ping pong table. You have to have a lot of room to get around and so forth. So don't give up on the individual homes also. Uh, one question that I end up having is about. How variable is the shooting mechanism here? If it keeps shooting in the straight direction, it's not much of a challenge yes. anymore. You just end up in a routine, similar to the video of Forrest Gump here. You just kept going in a loop, loop, yeah. loop, loop, loop. Are you able to introduce that variability? Does this machine here introduce it that you purchased? Uh, no. The, the machine we purchased was one of the smaller base models that don't, can't really change where it's going to shoot and everything. It's more because it just shoots out to get the ball back to you, not really in a way of change how it shoots in just straight right back. Okay, and uh, you mentioned the placement of these shots. Do you see that the ability to introduce variability, have it drift over time such that you actually have to chase after the hole, kind of like a whack-a-mole ping pong balls? Yeah. Yeah. You guys mentioned you might want to create a game around this. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think that game would look like? Uh, pretty much just exactly how it is right now. Where maybe at a carnival you'd have pay like a dollar or two for ten shots, and they could keep on flying, and someone would count it, and if they get it in the hole, they can like win a prize. Something uh, on those lines. <coughs> if it's at like an arcade place, we'd have it installed back, and we'd have a mechanism that makes so the ball won't come back to the robot again. Okay, well, I have to say it was actually nice to hear your your presentation. I couldn't get to you guys yesterday because there's so much popular demand around uh, you guys. There's <laughs> Too much of a line. Thank you. Questions from the floor. What makes this better than just a wall with four X's in different spots? I mean, it goes back to you and. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a very good question. I feel like it's more just a. It gives you like a sense of like you have to do something. If it's just some X's on the wall, it's like 
oh yeah, I'm just hitting against the wall. But if it's this, you kind of have an end goal to what you want to do. And at least it feels like you accomplished something after that. And you know that you hit it in the perfect spot. So yeah, it's just an X. Like, oh, did I hit it? Maybe I didn't. Um, a big part of the fun of tennis is you can slam shots down. Um, how do you think this is going to be introduced? Uh, I think we might make uh, newer holes to uh, maybe with those higher slam shots and stuff. Because I, that's something I think well, we're lacking right now. It's just we have regular shots and just little lobs. If you were to change something about this uh, prototype or project, what would it be? Uh, I would say something that would be more mobile. Uh, it's very cumbersome and very difficult to move around. Uh, maybe like uh, it would fold in different directions to be able to move it e easier with one person. Um, would you put the prototype up, like facing the wall or would you put a net over the top? Well, yeah. Uh, like, uh, what we thought about was maybe like it would be on like an actual ping pong table and that would be your thing and not, uh, that's another thing like how you said a net on the top, like that's what we're thinking because some people would hit it way too hard and it would go over. I think if we had like a bit of like a roof to it, that could help a lot too. I had a question about the front of it. Is it possible to see the front of yeah, the contraption? Okay, so that's that's really cool, and I'm imagining myself as a really novice ping pong player. <coughs> In fact, I'm, I'm not sure I could hit the giant black or big square screen. So, um, you know in bowling how they have the bumpers that they put up to make it a little easier? Have you thought about uh, sort of different size funnels? Uh, to yeah. Up front to get it in there a little easier? Yeah, we were also thinking about like interchangeable ones where like, the holes start out bigger, but you can put in ones that you can get very, very small and it's that larger size that it starts out. Um, what would happen if you hit the ball like where it shoots it back out? Would it, would it just would it go in the hole? Uh, that's, or something would it, that's, that's something we're also working on. We want to we want to maybe make uh, just an area like smaller so a ball can come out, but it's very very difficult to hit it in. If we got a better robot, I think we'd be able to have a smaller hole to that. But it just it's too inconsistent at times. So. One last question down here in the front. So um, I noticed the, in the bag how it kind of looks like um, it was made for uh, shooting out ping pong balls. And I was thinking if there was something that looked exactly for that purpose, do you guys have like competitors that in your patent search you found because? Uh, the only competitor was, uh, there's a company named Robopong that uh, it was, you shot it in like it, you did, it would shoot to you at uh, different speeds every time, so you can practice, but this one is able to so keep playing the ball. Nothing had a backboard on it that would then send the balls back to you like it. You could have been, so the point of our project is just a single ball that can go down and always come back to you, like you never have to retrieve the balls. Okay. All right, thank you boys, very good.